What's going on you guys? My name is Daniel and here on this channel we talk about growth stock investing with a focus in the Canadian market. On today's video we're going to be going over this penny stock which is a plant-based stock as well and I think that it's got a fairly good business behind it so don't dismiss it because it's a penny stock and I'll share with you why I think this company is poised for growth over the next five to ten years. The first thing that you should know is that revenues have been growing at over 100% year over year in the past five years. And they've still been growing the business in this whole pandemic, despite everything being shut down for a little while. On top of that, management is pretty solid in this company, as well as they've got great trends going for them with a whole tailwind of sustainable goods becoming a thing of the future. So in this video, I'll be diving through their investor presentation, giving you some commentary and points that I heard from the CEO himself after watching about an hour to two hours of CEO interviews. There's a lot of insights that you can garner from him that aren't written explicitly on the presentation. After that, we'll look at their financials and I'll give you my opinion at the end and whether I'm buying the stock or not. Before we get into this video, if you want to know when I'm buying and selling these stocks in real time, be sure to check out my Patreon page, which is in the first link in the description down below, as well as in the pinned comment. So the first slide on the investor presentation that I want to bring to your attention is the mission of the company. So basically they're employing a two-pronged strategy which is developing plant-based products and packaging. So this is their product development teams as well as the second strategy for improving the business and growing it is through acquiring relevant companies that expand their assortments, customer base, and market reach. So the first thing I want to bring your attention to here is their second part of the strategy which is acquiring different companies. And how they're doing this is they're actually buying petroleum-based companies transforming them into plant-based producing companies um, and then also taking their customers that they currently have and cross-selling their current products with those customers that they just acquired. If you guys don't know what cross-selling is, here's an example. Let's say a good nature product goes out there and buys company A and they're creating a petroleum-based plastic cup for cold drinks. So good nature products, what they'll do is go into that business, take it, revamp their entire manufacturing line so it's a plant-based plastic or a biodegradable plastic and continue selling that to the customers of company A. Then Good Nature Products will also engage with company A's customers and cross-sell them things like paper straws as well as compostable um, takeout containers. So this is how we can see Good Nature Products taking its acquisitions, building up some synergies and making it a more profitable company going forwards. This is an overview of the business here. They have 385 products, which means that there's a lot of products that can cross sell as they acquire new companies. They operate in 50 different states and provinces. They have 18,000 direct to consumer transactions each year. So this is them selling their consumer products. Um, if we go onto the website, we can see some of those products right now. So we're on their website right now and we can see some of the products that they actually offer direct to consumer. So they have different types of totes, recycling bins, pencil holders, vertical file holders, etc. They have 400 reoccurring B2B customers and these customers have a diverse background which I'll go over later on. And they've also completed three mergers and acquisitions. Um, I think this is probably within the last nine months. Looking at the revenue, you can see that in 2015, they started off with about $63,000 in revenue. And in 2019, they grew that to about $10 million. This is a five year CAGR of 172% growth year over year. Now, if you look into more detail with their quarterly revenues, we can see that those have also been all been trending up. Even in 2020 with this whole pandemic, in Q2, this is when the COVID-19 virus hit everyone, and they still managed to grow the revenues quite sizably. And in Q3, they also continue to grow it. And in Q4, they're probably gonna grow it to maybe around $5 billion. Um, I don't know exactly, but we'll wait for those numbers to come out. And we do some quick math to figure out the PS ratio of the trailing 12 months. So taking these four quarters that I'm pointing to right here, they have a price to sales ratio of 10, which is fairly rich, but this company is growing their revenues 100% year over year. So that's sort of expected. Now I estimate their next quarter revenue to be around $5 million. So that would bring their total revenues for 2021 to around $16 million. And looking at their current market cap today of $136.9 million, that brings their PS ratio as of December 31st to around a 8.5. So that PS ratio is dropping quite rapidly. Now, another thing that's not mentioned on this investor presentation is the fact that they acquired this company called IPF. 
And this company they acquired for about $16.7 million. And the company does revenues around $17 million in the past 12 months as of September 2020. So if we were to add this to Good Nature Products revenues for next year, that would bring the total revenues to around $32 million. And that would bring their PS ratio to around 4.7 based on their price today. So that's a fairly low PS ratio in my opinion for a company that's growing as quick as Good Nature Products. Now in this slide here, it shows a massive opportunity going forward, how this market for sustainable products is gonna go up to about $150 billion in 2021. And with a market cap of $136 million compared to the total addressable market of $150 billion, this company is not even one one thousandth of this total addressable market. So I think that there's a lot of room for this company to grow going forwards. This slide here quickly shows you all the different trends that are playing in favor for good nature products. The fact that millennials and Gen Z are more aware of the negative impacts of plastics and things like fossil fuels, they're leaning more towards sustainable products, which is in good nature products realm. The second tailwind for this business is a fragmentation in the whole sustainable product space. Currently, there's a lot of small entrants coming into the market with one or two products. And then as well as there's these large companies out there, dinosaur companies that have petroleum based products looking to get into the sustainable goods. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of mergers and acquisitions happening going forwards where these large dinosaur companies are buying up these small new entrants so that they don't need to spend the time to develop these new sustainable products. And Good Nature Products is a definitely a possible target for acquisitions being a small market cap company. And shareholders will get rewarded handsomely because in this hot space right now, a company looking to buy Good Nature Products is going to pay a premium, which means that they're going to be paying more than the current price of the shares. The second scenario for Good Nature Products is that they could continue running their business, buying up these small entrants and building up a large empire in the whole consumer packaging space as well as consumer product space. The third tailwind that they have for them is the increased regulatory pressure. So you can see right now that there's a lot of governments out there who are putting bans on things like plastics. So some places you're not even allowed to have plastic water bottles. A lot of the spaces right now, they ban plastic straws as well as plastic bags are being phased out. And I'm sure going forwards in the future, this will also impact packaging materials for foods as well as retail goods. These will all need to be either renewal products, recyclable or plant-based. This slide here outlines the different types of materials that they build their products out of. So they have a press and molded pulp, which is sort of like your paper products. They also have bioplastics, which are made of um, plant-based materials, which are recyclable. And then their biodegradable plastics. These are plastics actually turned back into dirt. So I think the biodegradables are a little bit more expensive. However, it helps these companies who are buying into them just have a better, more sustainable brand as well as the bioplastics, they're not bad because they can be recycled, but eventually they could probably upsell their customers to biodegradables as the whole world moves towards a more sustainable movement. The CEO mentioned that when he talks with a lot of customers right now, some of them may not be ready to make the leap into bioplastics or biodegradable plastics, or even into the fiber lines. However, I think in a year or two, a lot of these companies end up coming back to them and saying, hey, we're switching our business. We wanna buy your products. So this is how Good Nature Products does their sales. They go into companies right now, maybe not expecting to make a sale, but a year or two down the road, these companies remember them and come back. Here we can see an outline of how diverse their business is. So we can see the different sizes of business that they service, anywhere from local stores to small businesses to large national box stores, and all the different industries that they're in, including packaging, food services, home and commercial, industrial, as well as they do custom design services for packaging. When we look at penny stocks, we must consider management with a lot of weight because these are the guys steering the ship and they make all the big decisions. So first off, we have the CEO, Paul Antonotis, who is a former Best Buy CEO of Europe. So he has extensive experience in the consumer industry and he's a salesman at heart. If you go to his LinkedIn, we can see that he's been with the company for about nine years. So he's not fresh off the block. He's actually built the business from ground up. He was the CEO of um, the Europe division for about two years, so not too long, but he also spent another 11 years at Best Buy before that. Secondly, their CTO, Dr. Michel Labonte, he's a PhD in bioplastics packaging, um, and he has a lot of experience in the industry. He's not a young lad, he's definitely older. If we look at his LinkedIn, we can see that he spent about 31 years as the coordinator of the plastics department 
in this college here. So he's been teaching about plastics and also he's been with his company Good Nature Products for about eight years. So he knows all the ins and outs of their product development, which is I think a huge bonus for this company. Now let's look at the share structure to see how aligned management is with shareholders. So around 39% of the shares are owned by management and insider ownership. So these are like people in the company or early founders. They have a total number of shares of around 200 million shares, which is quite a bit. Um, so that's one thing that's slightly worrying about that. The fact that they have about 50 million shares that aren't currently out there. They're actually in warrants and options and other plays like that. One thing that the CEO did mention in these interviews is that the top 100 shareholders in this company make up around 90% of the shares. So the remaining 10% are probably being traded by people like you and I, as well as day traders. So it's a very small float that's being traded on the day to day. The last thing that we're going to do is turn over to the financials. So first off, looking at their balance sheet, we can see they have about $12 million in current assets and $8 million in current liabilities. So not a super healthy current ratio, somewhere around 1.5, but not too bad. But they also have a lot of outstanding debt of about $28 million. And if we go to note seven, so you can see here the amount of debt that they have for the following years. So in 2021, it's only $1.3 million. And for the next three to four years, it's roughly around $10 million. And the remaining amount is due in 2025 and beyond. So they have a lot of time to repay this debt. So I'm not too worried about uh, the amount of debt that they have in their balance sheet. If we go over to the revenues, we can see that they've grown their revenue year over year, as well as they have decent gross margins of around 30% to 35%. However, they are still losing money, so take note of that if you're investing in this company. They have a lot of selling, general, and an administrative cost at around $2 million. So that's quite high and it's doubled since last year. So here in note 10, we can see the breakdown of their selling, general, and administrative costs. So salaries haven't increased by too much, but the other costs have increased by more than doubled. They also outsource supply chain, freight costs, and fulfillment, and that hasn't increased by too much. And they've got a new item here called acquisition related activity. So the acquisition activity and also other selling and general administrative expenses, these are the two things to watch out for going forwards. Now looking at the cash flow statement, this will give us an idea whether they need to raise money going forwards or not. So we can see that cash used in operating activities is around $6.1 million. And if you remember on the balance sheet, it's their current assets at around $12 million. So they probably will need to raise cash in the next nine to 18 months. So to summarize everything in my thoughts, I think that they have a solid management team with their CEO and CTO have extensive experience in the industry. This could probably take them to a half a billion dollar company or a billion dollar company in the next couple of years. Their financials are not the greatest, so this may be a red flag and a risk going forwards. The revenue growth is super impressive, and I think that it's gonna grow even quicker in 2021 with that latest acquisition. They have solid tailwinds for them with the way that the whole world is shifting to more sustainable products. And lastly, I think that the fragmented market would present us as investors with an opportunity to buy in here and hopefully the company either gets acquired or grows their business massively by expanding through mergers and acquisitions. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts about this company or any other things that I missed. If you guys want, you can check out the CEO interview, which I've linked in the description down below. If you want to get my buy and sell alerts on when I'm buying into the stock, be sure to check out my Patreon page, as well as you can buy the stock on West Simple Trade as well as Quest Trade. So links for those are down in the description down below. If you sign up today, you get free money. If you guys are interested in more plant-based product companies, click on these videos right up here. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, keep up the grind and have a great day.